Thank you. Thanks very much. It's great uh, to be here. Thank you for having me. I, um, I, I also found parking, which is a great feeling for a guy from Deal. So, <laughs> that too. Um, okay, so I'm going to go through some slides. You're going to hear from, uh, from Jessica as well. And then we're gonna, I'm, I've got all night, so we'll take uh, as many questions as you, as you have. I'll do my best to try to answer them. I thought uh, to start, we would just get to know each other in the room a little bit. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, internet access, so we're going to try to do this on the phone. Does everyone want to uh, log in over here? Go to this website on your phone, wholeev.com slash edwack134, okay? You should see something that looks like this. You see it? Dot com forward slash edwack134. Do you guys see that? No, it doesn't have to be. Capital. Let me walk over here. Okay, so, first question, do you guys see that? Sorry, I can't display it, it's not quite working, but if not, we'll skip it. Do you guys see that? Who are you? So you've got a couple of uh, choices. Uh, I am a high school student, I am a college student, I'm a parent of a high school or college student, I'm a parent, but my kids are not yet in high school, I'm a grandparent, I'm an educator, and then everyone else. Okay. So, good, we're getting, so here, here's the breakdown so far. We've got 20% uh, parents of uh, high school students. Oh, there's at least one high school student here. Uh, one parent with young kids, a couple of grandparents, educators, a lot of everyone else. Okay. All right, so we have a nice mix. We have no college students. It's too early for them, probably. All right, let's do the next question. Sorry, it works better when the internet's working. Okay, this may not work. This may not work, here we go. Yeah, I know, sorry for the technical. Okay, how about this one? You see that one? It's anonymous. This question is, have you ever smoked cigarettes? Okay. So we have a few, so far most people have never smoked a cigarette. A few current smokers, a few people who quit, a few people, a lot of people who tried but never became a smoker. Okay. You guys see this? The next question again, sorry I can't project it. Have you ever used an e-cigarette vapor tool? So again, a pretty even spread from what I'm seeing. Uh, a lot of people never used it. One person doesn't even know what it is. I think the computer class is down the hall for that person. <laughs> That's okay. You may like this anyway. Okay. And then a few people who uh, use it regularly, or a few people who don't, who use it but not regularly. Okay. Let's see the next one. Presumably everybody knows the answer to this one. I don't know. Okay, so this one says it's a picture of a, I won't say what it is, but um, the, ma the majority of people have seen or handled this device, is what I'm getting on the, I wish you could see this, all right, so, next one, I didn't want to tell you what it was, but let's see, I think most people probably know, yeah, okay. There's no spread on this one, 100% <laughs> answered electronic nicotine delivery device. Okay. All right, this one take a little bit more time. I want you guys to, uh, uh, so what I'm looking at here for those who don't have it on the phone is um, rank the following drugs in order of most addictive to least addictive. And the list is cocaine, marijuana, nicotine, heroin, and alcohol. Okay, so look at that. All right, we've got heroin number one. Okay, now some of you guys are being too clever. So you got some of you put nicotine number one, <laughs> heroin number two, cocaine number three, alcohol number four, marijuana number five. What you find out, you'll find out in a few minutes what the answer is. Okay. True or false? You guys see the next one? 
true or false, the uh, aerosol produced by a jewel is water vapor. We've got a lot of trues. We've got a lot of trues. We've got more trues than false. Okay, good. I'm glad you guys came. <laughs> okay. Last one and then we'll get to it, okay? Last one and we'll get to it. I came here tonight because... Thank you, Mother. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, here's a breakdown. Number one, I've seen some crazy stuff on the news and I want to learn more. Number two, I'm worried about my kids. And then a tie between I'm worried about myself and, uh, and everyone. I'm a little confused because uh, I am Ezra's mother is like number three. <laughs> All right. Okay. So anyway, thank you for uh, doing that. So let, let's get started. So, so to talk about um, e-cigarettes, jewels, vaping, where I would like to actually start is just to talk about cigarettes. Okay. So what do we know about cigarettes? Cigarettes are responsible for 480,000 preventable deaths every year in the United States. And if you do the math, which I didn't, but this slide comes from the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, um, 5.6 million children under the age of 18 who are alive today would die because of smoking, unless smoking rates stop, right? So smoking is bad. So how does smoking kill you? Lots of different ways, right? Heart attacks, strokes, uh, lung cancer, pretty much any cancer, COPD, blood clots, you can get an aneurysm, you can, it, it does lots of bad things, cigarettes, right? And why? So what's in a cigarette? So 600 different ingredients, then you light it on fire, and what you get is 7,000 different chemical compounds. Of those, roughly 70 of them are known to cause cancer. So there's some of the weird stuff that's in it, right? Um, arsenic, tar, the same stuff they pave the street with. So cigarettes are, cigarettes are bad, and uh, everybody's been getting the message. People seem to know that, you guys know that, cigarettes are bad, right? So, so from 1960s until recently, this is the rate of cigarette smoking among adults. It's been plummeting, and that's a, that's a great thing. Okay, and then what about kids? So this is a graph looking at uh, cigarette smoking among kids. Purple is 12th graders, yellow is 10th graders, blue is 8th graders. So you see that it's, it's dropping. Everybody's getting the message, right? Cigarettes are bad. So there's still a substantial portion of adults and also kids who are using cigarettes. So where do the e-cigarettes come in? So actually, electronic cigarettes were designed to help people stop smoking by trying to make something that was cleaner. That was the idea. So it was actually patented by um, a, a, a Chinese guy in 2003. Uh, they go back before that, but he was credited with, the, with uh, inventing the first commercialized e-cigarette. Why? He was a smoker. His father was a smoker. His father died of lung cancer. He said, all right, I'm going to make something cleaner. So that was the idea anyway. So how do these things work? Does anyone already know? Do you want to tell me? No? Okay. So. What, what we're seeing here, this is a, a, an outline of, of a basic electronic cigarette. So forget the LED light, but you basically you have a battery, you have a little microprocessor, a tiny little computer, you have um, a sensor, you have a heating element made out of metal, and then you have a cartridge where there's going to be liquid. What's in the liquid? Li basically liquid nicotine, right? When you inhale, the heating element heats up the liquid, turns it into a vapor, turns it into turns it into an aerosol that you can breathe in. So that's the idea behind it. So these things go by different names, and you'll, you'll hear more about this, uh, I'm sure, later as well. Um, E-cigs, vapes, vape pens, jewel, mods, tanks, e-pipes, whatever you can think of. The, uh, the uh, medical name, we, when we write about them in the medical journals, we call them electronic nicotine delivery systems, because you always have to have a nice um, Acronym. This is key to getting published in, in medicine. <laughs> so, uh, electronic nicotine delivery system. So, what do they look like? And you're going to see more of this. But so, this is an e-cigarette. Looks like a cigarette. This is an early generation uh, electronic cigarette. They made it look like a cigarette.
Okay, this is, um, these are vape pens, right? These are it's basically the same thing, different, different shape. So uh, this is much bigger, much more customizable. You can put all different kinds of stuff in there, but that's also uh, a vaping device. Who knows what that is? A sweatshirt, a hoodie, that's right. It's a special hoodie. This is a special vaping hoodie. How did I make this up? Right, right? And so you hide your little vape pen in there and then uh, that the, the drawstring has a tube in it and you can, you can vape when the teacher turns around to write on the whiteboard. <laughs> of course, Your Honor. Thank you for coming. Right. Okay, and what's this? Everybody knows what this is, right? This is the jewel. This is the market leader, right? They've got two thirds of the market. They've got three quarters of the youth market. You can correct me. Um, so what does it look it looks like? Yeah, it looks like um, one of those USB keys. Right, that we were looking for to do the presentation tonight. Right, it actually does plug into a computer. That's how you charge it. It's got all different flavors. Right, so um, these guys are the cartridges here that contain the liquid nicotine, and you plug it in there, and off you go. Okay. So what is a jewel? This is basically I took this from the CDC website, but um, and you guys should have the handouts but just so that we're all on the same page. It's a brand of e-cigarette, right? And it looks like one of those USB drives. Um, it's battery powered, it heats the nicotine containing liquid, it makes an aerosol and you can inhale it. You shouldn't, but you could. Um, right, so jewels actually have very high levels of nicotine and we're gonna, you know, I can, I'm gonna go over that again in a, in a slide in a minute. Um, but basically one of those little tiny pots, uh, as much as a pack of cigarettes, if not, if not more. Uh, and actually, Juul, the company, uses uh, nicotine salts, which are even more potent than uh, some of the other liquid nicotines that you can buy. Um, so you've seen in the news uh, that uh, basically all the kids are doing it, right? Um, what's interesting is that a lot of kids don't even know it contains nicotine, right? It's just this cool mango flavored thing that everybody's doing in the bathroom or whatever. Um, but it's not the only one that looks like that, so there are, there are others. So uh, when people say they're, they're jeweling, it's not necessarily that product, but, you know. So what I had said earlier was that this was designed to help to be cleaner than a cigarette. So this is not an FDA approved device. This is not an FDA approved treatment to quit smoking at all. In fact, and this, this literature came out a few months ago, if you want to get off cigarettes, so you, you use a Juul or a vaping device to do it, you may be successful, but 80% of those smokers end up long-term on the e-cigarette. They're still using nicotine every day. They can't kick the habit. As opposed to 90% of smokers who quit using approved methods, uh, things, gums, medications, they'll actually eventually wean themselves off the nicotine habit. So if you trade a cigarette for a jewel, you're basically going to be jeweling long-term, I'll say long-term. Uh, if you are successful quitting smoking uh, in the traditional way, 80%, 90% of those smokers end up picking nicotine totally. So let's talk for a minute. So who's actually vaping, right? So about 4.5% of American adults, that's about 11 million people, a third of them are doing it every day. And here's the age breakdown, right? So you can see that the majority are young people, right? The biggest category by far, 18 to 24, these are adults. Okay, are they quitting smoking? They're not quitting smoking. 40% of them never touched a cigarette. So that, that's, who's, that's who's vaping, at least among adults. Okay, but who's really vaping? It's the kids. It's teenagers. It's high schoolers. So what's been going on in the past three years? It's basically exploded into epidemic proportions. That's not my word, that's the FDA commissioner's term, epidemic proportions. What you're seeing here, these are uh, 
rates of vaping use 8th graders, 10th graders, 12th graders. This is 2017, 2018, 2019. More than doubled. More than doubled in three years. So these are not people that are quitting smoking. These are people that are essentially becoming addicted to nicotine. So again, I, this was the graph that we had seen a few minutes ago. This was the rate of cigarette smoking essentially plummeting over the past uh, few decades. And what do you think it looks like now? If we, instead of saying cigarettes, we say nicotine, nicotine use or nicotine addiction. So it's startling. These are real numbers. It goes straight up. So this is why the FDA commissioner described it as an epidemic. So the stuff has been flying off the shelves. You may, you may know that. Why? It's got very high nicotine content. It's got all kinds of appealing flavors. Uh, easily concealed and used discreetly, right? So you're in class, it's in your pocket, the teacher goes like this. You take a puff, the teacher turns around like nothing happened. Uh, I can only, in, 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 in the bathrooms too. And it's customizable. You can actually buy skins for this with like your favorite baseball team and put it on your jewel and really express your individuality, right? Which is, I mean, my grandfather was a smoker. I don't remember him expressing his individuality that way, but, but maybe it's to, anyway. So this is, uh, so these are some of the flavors. So this is from May of uh, 2018. So the most, the most popular flavor was mango, followed by uh, cool mint, creme brulee, fruit medley. So the, these are the, you know, why do kids say they vape? So 39% um, have seen friends do it or family members do it. Uh, a third of them like the flavors, mint, candy, fruit, chocolate, right? Um, and then uh, a good majority of them also uh, don't think that uh, it's harmful. It's fine, right? It's water paper. Here's some of the advertising, and you're not going to see this much anymore, actually, because uh, because the negative press jewel has actually uh, voluntarily stopped advertising. But, but I won't tell you what I think. But you can look at that and say who, who you think their target audience is. And and if you're puzzled, you're not sure. Um, let me show you this one. So this came from it's hard to say, but this came from the FDA's website actually. What you're seeing. So. Uh, this is real. So on this side, it's nicotine containing uh, liquid for electronic cigarettes. On this side are real uh, food, food products. Nicotine, real food products. So this is from the FDA website because they sent them a letter asking them to please stop doing this. I'm not sure if it's still on the market. Hopefully not. So what's in the stuff? So nicotine, we talked about, there's nicotine. There's flavor and chemicals, okay? But there's also other stuff, because it turns out nicotine and flavor and chemicals don't like to stay in the liquid. So you've got to help them. So you've got to dissolve them in something. So they call it a humectant, right? So it's propylene glycol, uh, glycerol, ethylene glycol, benzoic acid, so antifreeze and other chemicals that are in the liquid in order uh, uh, to keep the nicotine and the flavorings together. So, okay, so how does this, so is this harmful, is this not harmful? So there's three potential sources of harm that we can talk about uh, with the e-cigarette device themselves. So there's the nicotine, the aerosol, and the device itself. So let's just go through that a little bit uh, quickly. So we talked earlier, so how much nicotine is in a Juul pod? This is also, again, from the CDC website based on Juul's own website. So it's about one Juul pod to one pack of cigarettes. So that's if you get the low dose uh, Juul pod, the 3%, the two, but they also have a 5% that's very popular. So that's two packs of cigarettes per pod. And um, if you're a Juul user, you're not using one pot a day. So you're smoking, you're not smoking, but you're, I guess you are smoking, take that back. But you're using, you're vaping one to two packs of cigarettes per little pot. Okay, so what are we doing? We're creating the next generation 
of nicotine addiction, right? Nicotine is the drug in cigarettes, in tobacco, that causes addiction, right? Um, and I'm gonna show you the graph on the next slide. Nicotine is as addictive as heroin. Does everyone know what, what heroin is? I know. Right? Thank you, Judge. All day long. Yeah. Right? And what happens when you do heroin, Judge? Um, a lot of things. <laughs> Anything good? Yeah, I, I could spot them in the street now. <laughs> okay. Um, opioids, cocaine, right? Can't get off. Um, they come to you for help or they come to you to go to jail? Both. Um, but they usually, we send them into a program because, and I've not seen, I, I want to say I've seen maybe not even 1% get off of heroin. They could almost never get off. They end up at a clinic, at methadone clinics, where they have to go every morning at 7 o'clock in the morning before they go to work. They have to stand on line. Um, you know, under Fort Hamilton, I know where they all are, and they wait to get their pills, and they will not give them more than one pill because they want to make sure they, they space them. So if you want to go for away for a weekend, you can't even go if you're addicted to heroin. You have to stand outside, get your pill every morning, and if you're good after two, three years, they'll give you two pills. So you can, for a weekend, but not during the week, you cannot go to work without taking your pill. If you miss it, you relapse. So I recommend nobody see Gina, when she's at work, when you're going to be in trouble. Uh, back to nicotine. Okay. So, the inhaled nicotine very rapidly absorbed, right? Um, so, we're talking about e-cigarettes, so most of them contain nicotine, not a surprise. Here's a surprise, at least I was surprised. So, the CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control, they went and they surveyed these retail locations. They said, okay, well, let me look at what you got. 99% of the cigarettes sold, the, e the electronic cigarettes sold, had nicotine. Okay, no surprise. What is surprising is that um, these brands don't always disclose that. You could think that you're just getting some flavors, you're getting some nicotine. Nine out of ten people addicted to nicotine become addicted before they're age 18. And uh, nine and a half out of ten before they're age 25. So here's the answer to the question. It's a little hard to see. The yellow bar is the uh, nicotine. Okay. How addictive is it? So there's different ways of, I'm not an addiction expert, there's different ways of uh, characterizing addiction, but this was a, a paper that was published in a journal, medical journal called The Lancet in 2007 by addiction specialists who wanted to do this objectively. So physical dependence, the only thing that beats uh, nicotine is heroin and street methadone, which is a, another opioid. Um, in terms of psychological dependence, addiction, does that make sense? The only thing that beats nicotine is cocaine and heroin. So what I'm trying to say is it's addictive. So okay, so that in and of itself is bad, but but, but it's particularly bad, separate from the addiction, in terms of what it does to the adolescent brain. So um, our brains grow uh, like crazy when, from when we're teens up until around age 25. It's a very very important time in brain development, and nicotine harms that development, it impairs attention, learning, it impairs memory, mood control, impulsivity, and some people say it primes the brain for future addiction. So it's a serious issue, because it's, it's not just that you're becoming addicted before the age of 18 and you're going to become a customer for life of this company called Juul. You're screwing up your brain. I know that didn't sound medical. That's what you're doing. This is uh, an advertisement that, again, the CDC, the federal government is running. It's basically a bunch of brains in a... Uh, uh, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, and the tagline, it's not like you can buy a new brain. You can't. I mean, it's a very critical time. Uh, you get one shot at it. Um, and, you know, so after 25, do whatever you want. But, you know, when you're in high school, college, and until then, Maybe not. Okay, so what's in the aerosol? So it's not water. It's not water. Um, so here's some of the stuff that's in the aerosol. So this is some of the stuff that um, you have people who have gone and analyzed what happens when you take the liquid, put the heating coil, and vaporize it, what you get. So you get a lot of good stuff. You get uh, nicotine, obviously, tin, lead, chromium, arsenic again these very, very fine particles that make their way into the lung. These 
this stuff has been associated with lots of bad things. Lung damage, uh, kidney damage, fertility, cancer. So that's what's in the aerosol. It's not, it's not water vapor. It's not water vapor. Do we, do we know long term what this stuff does? No, we don't. I mean, we, I'm going to get into it in a minute what, it's, what we know it's doing now, but we don't know what it, what it does in the long term. So, oh, is it safer than cigarettes? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. We don't know. I would argue that safer is not safe, and uh, what we don't know also doesn't equal safe. What am I showing you here? These are uh, cigarette ads from the 1950s. That's a doctor and a baby selling cigarettes in the 1950s. We know that now. Maybe, right? So, we're sort of the same thing is happening uh, with a lot of these e-cigarettes and baby products. We, we really don't know. It could take a few years to develop COPD, lung cancer, heart disease, stroke. We know all about that with cigarettes. We don't know yet with the vaping products, right? They came on the U.S. market in 2007. It's only the past few years that it's exploded, right? Speaking of explosion, that was a bad joke, but. This is a picture of a kid whose face is broken because the device he was using to vape exploded in his face. Um, you don't have to be a radiologist, so, but this is a scan, a reconstruction of his face. His jaw is broken. He blew out his teeth. The device exploded. So, anyway. And, but it gets worse. Okay, so. The, in, the conclusion would be electronic cigarettes pose significant health risks, both known and unknown, especially to kids and young adults. What do I mean by unknown? So let's get this. So you guys have seen this in the, in the paper. You've seen this on the news. So this is a kid who's in the hospital in a medically induced coma on a ventilator in the ICU with terrible damage to his lung uh, because he was vaping. Now he happened to be vaping, not nicotine, he happened to be vaping. Uh, marijuana, right? This bootleg marijuana products um, that I'll, you can take a look at that, but who do you think they're, that's for, right? That's not the medical stuff, I can tell you that. Um, so, this is, these are the CDC numbers since, uh, where are we, Monday, since this, this past Thursday, right? These are the reports of lung injury since October 22nd. 1,604 reported cases, 34 deaths, median age is 23. Most of them are men, right? So you say, okay, well, Ezra, I only do the, uh, the nicotine stuff. I don't do the other stuff. I don't have to worry about ending up in the ICU on ventilator. Maybe not, I don't know, but, so 10% of these cases were nicotine only. 31% were marijuana only. The rest were a mix, right? So roll the dice. Maybe you'll be fine. I will point out that, um, again, not just the vaping is an epidemic, but the lung injury cases are also considered an epidemic. You say, well, how does that make sense? It's only 1,604 cases, but not every case is reported, so it's considered the tip of the iceberg. Um, and for those of you just dueling, you still might need to worry. So you may have seen these guys on the news as well. So this young lady, that's a ventilator, a respirator with a tube down her throat. She was just chewing. This guy can't see it well, but he's standing in the hospital with his with his mom. That's a tube uh, going into his chest to reinflate his collapsed lung. I feel like everybody was in a better mood a half hour ago. <laughs> All right. Um, I can go through this if you want, but basically this is what a normal lung is supposed to look like on a CAT scan. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on it if you want to know exactly what that is, you can ask me after. But um, this is what the lungs of the people in the ICUs after ventilating, after uh, vaping look like. But basically, all this white garbage should not be there. And it is, the lung is very pissed off. Where is everyone getting it from? Where do you think? So, uh, retail stores, from friends, and a bunch of people get it from the internet. You can only get it from the internet if you click the box on the website that says, I am 21. And nobody would not click the box if it wasn't true. But that's where you get it. So anyway, so where are we? So, so who's protecting us? Who's looking out for us? I'm going to go through all of this. These are some of the regulatory milestones 
Um, basically, the cigarettes show up, the, the vaping stuff shows up in 2007, right? Um, it's only 2009 that uh, Congress passes a law giving the FDA the right to regulate tobacco, but you know what they exempt in that law? E-cigarettes in 2009. The year later, the FDA says, well, we're going to do it anyway. They lose in court, and it's not until 2016 that they actually assert the right to do it. And when they do, all they did was say, nobody under 18 can buy the stuff. That's pretty much all they did. So it really has fallen to the states to try to figure this out. Um, so actually Michigan was the first state in September to try to ban it and uh, Governor Cuomo a couple of weeks later said, oh, I'm going to ban it too. And then last week, uh, both bans were blocked by the courts, actually. Well, what's been most effective is the news reports that you've been watching because because of the uh, market pressure, Juul actually, uh, first they stopped selling the flavors in the stores and uh, uh, as of last week or two weeks ago, they said that they're going to voluntarily stop selling the stuff online. So if you, if, you, if you think, I shouldn't be able to buy this stuff if it's not good for me, well, it's not true. So, in summary, I'm basically done. Uh, E-cigarettes are not safe for youth, young adults, pregnant women, or adults that don't currently use tobacco products. If you've never smoked, or use tobacco products or e-cigarettes, do not start. And, and uh, you guys have a handout. There's some um, other places where you can get some more information where from a lot of this information came. Thank you. I'm from the State Foundation. I am here to tell you guys about, I guess, kind of overlapping with Dr. Dweck, but also just a little bit about what you might see if your kid or loved one is using the jewel. I brought a hands-on so you guys can see what it looks like, and I'll show it to you all after. This is not a jewel; this is a different device, but you guys can get a sense of what we're talking about here. So. Let's first start if nicotine is a drug. Um, as you see, nicotine is a drug, and as you heard from Dr. Dweck, it increases the dopamine in the brain, which is the same chemicals that increase when you use other substances, including alcohol, marijuana, and cocaine. It's the Dopamine is the thing that kind of makes you feel happy. It's those happy things that you get, like rewards, pleasure, motor function. So. Dopamine is definitely increased by the nicotine, and that impacts the brain, as I will show you right here. Um, you probably have a handout of this in your books as well. But if you see that when you use nicotine, it increases the, the dopamine. So as the nicotine goes down, it starts leading to cravings because your dopamine decreases between the use, leading to withdrawal, which is when you feel like you are in need of your substance. Um, so you are going to want to use more nicotine so that you can restore that sense of pleasure and calmness that you originally felt from the nicotine. Um, okay, so just to give you a sense of how toxic pure nicotine is, just one drop of like pure nicotine can kill you. It's super potent, it's very addictive, and it's not good for you. So why are your children using nicotine? And why is it a problem? So a lot of youth think it's cool to use the jewel because, I mean, it looks pretty cool. It's very nice looking, sleek. You don't have to go outside for your smoke break. You could do it in class, get away with it. Um, it's also peer pressure. You know, a lot of kids are doing it. So in order to fit in, you feel like you want to, you know, be part of the group. 
Um, it does create a pleasurable buzz, so you, you want that feeling, that lightheadedness that some people are going for. Some people enjoy that. It can relieve stress temporarily. And like I said before, it oftentimes becomes like a social activity. You know, if people are bored, I know we have clients all the time that just want to smoke so that they can get through the Netflix show without, you know, being bored. So it's definitely a very big social aspect. So high, that's why it does attract high schoolers and young adults because, you know, peer pressure is a real thing and they need to fit in. So let's be all together with using the, the e-cigs. Um, but why is it a problem? Because it can cause, as Dr. Dweck said, it can cause many health issues. It can lead to longer term addiction. You can get addicted pretty easily to nicotine. You know, the money that they're spending, I'm sure a lot of your kids have asked you for money. Where is it going? Maybe lunch, maybe pods, maybe who knows. Um, and then there is some physical dependence, which means that there is withdrawal, which I'll get to in a minute, about what withdrawal symptoms might look like and what are withdrawal symptoms. And it is considered a gateway drug. I quoted that because a lot of people view that to be um, contra no, not what's the word, controversial. It's like a controversy whether or not it's a gateway drug. But let's talk about a gateway drug. So not everyone that uses nicotine or any other drug is going to be addicted to that drug or nicotine. Um, however, the three most common gateway drugs, which means it's, it increases the likelihood that you will use a more intense substance, would be nicotine, alcohol, and marijuana. So when you see those three words, I'm sure you think that, you know, sounds pretty common, all your kids, prob not all, many of your kids have probably used one or all of those things while in high school and especially in college, young adults. So these are the three most common gateway drugs because likely if you're going to start using alcohol, marijuana, nicotine more frequently, you might end up just kind of moving on to the next best thing because eventually your body gets used to these things. and. I think particular with people that struggle with any one of those substances, they become even more gateway drug for you, um, for those who struggle, because it's once you're switching from drug to drug, it's just kind of a matter of time that you go back to the other one. Um, so as we said before, they I think e-cigarettes were brought out in 2015 or so, that's when Juul came about, but they were brought out originally to help people quote unquote stop cig smoking cigarettes. However, we don't necessarily know that's true, especially with younger adults and kids when their brain is still developing. You may not actually know that it's you know, a problem until it's almost too late and then they're already in the throes of addiction. So the common question that we hear is, you know, what is a vape? Because I think a lot of people think that vaping is different than juuling, which is different than this. You know, some people say, oh, my kid's vaping, and oh, no, my kid's juuling. It's the same thing. Um, the vape is like the overall umbrella term. These are a variety of different types of e-cigarettes. And I know you showed a picture before, but I kind of had the same picture. Just shows you what it really breaks down and looks like. The difference between these types of of uh, models are really just like kind of over time, they, they changed over time. Some of them use the, like the salt nicotine, which is what we said before, it's a little, it's harsher, and nicot it's stronger nicotine content, but it doesn't cause that same like throat pain, and it doesn't cause that same like pain in smoking, whereas some of them are more like free base, where you can customize it more, add more, do more, so it's a little harsher on your throat but it's not as strong of a, a nicotine content. So if you think about it with the Juul, for example, which is obviously this one, um, you're smoking much more because you're smoking more potent nicotine and it's not causing you so much pain. So it's a smoother experience for you. It's more enjoyable. It's not as, it's not as painful. So you're more likely to do more and more of it. And, um, and some of them are more customizable, so you could put more in them, you could put less in them, you could smoke higher content, like you said, three milligram, uh, three and then five, and then there's a very variety of different things, flavors. So 
They're pretty customizable, which makes them also pretty enticing, as well as the different flavors and other things that are in it. One thing to keep in mind is that, I think we said before as well, they don't only deliver nicotine, they can deliver anything. So like marijuana is definitely a common one nowadays. Um, a lot of people are putting the marijuana stuff in it as well, so that's pretty problematic, as well as other substances. So it can really deliver anything. It's what you hear nicotine mostly, but marijuana has been pretty common as of late as well. So, just real briefly, they do not contain tobacco, but they do contain nicotine and other chemicals, which we went through before, and it's primarily problematic for younger adults because of the developing brain and that it can severely impact that. So also, as we said before, each jewel pod, those tiny little things, the little things that look like they hold nothing, it's almost the same, it's basically the same amount of nicotine as a pack of 20 cigarettes, which is a lot of cigarettes. And if you think about it, because you can get away with it more, because you can do it in class, you could do it right now, technically, you could just keep smoking that thing, you could smoke a pod in like a very short period of time. So when you think of how many pods you might be using, or someone might be using, it could be a lot of cigarettes and that's a lot, a lot of nicotine. And think of it, how much nicotine you're using, the dependence you, you, you developed that because you're just continuously using it. Um, so abuse versus addiction. Um, abuse generally comes first. So someone who abuses a substance is not necessarily going to become addicted. So take nicotine, for example. You might know that it's not the best idea. You might know that you can stop, but you're choosing not to. Like, oh, I can stop smoking if I want to, but I'm just not going to. So that's someone who's abusing the substance. Once that develops into addiction, it's when your body and brain are basically physically and or psychologically dependent on the substance and or behavior which can lead to withdrawal symptoms when you stop. So addiction is when, when you don't use it, your body reacts because it needs it. So that's when you know the difference. Someone who's just abusing it may or may not become addicted, but um, nicotine can very quickly and easily create that addiction where your body and brain basically need it or else it's, it feels sick. Okay, so here are some of the Signs and symptoms of the nicotine use. These are some things you might want to, you might notice, you might look out for. Um, so the first one, obviously, it looks like a cool little flash drive. You could fit in your hand. The one I'm actually holding, which I can show you guys after, it's one of the disposable ones, so you could just throw it out right after. But if you see, it's pretty tiny. It doesn't even show when I hold it. So it's pretty, it's, it's a bit smaller than the Jewel. Um, but Nobody uses flash drives anymore as far as I'm concerned. I mean, we're in the 2019. I don't know anyone who uses a flash drive. So if you see a flash drive, it's likely not a flash drive unless someone's doing some old school presentation. Um, so also, if you notice like the skin, you start showing wounds and it's, it makes the skin have like red spots on it. Um, you might become sensitive to caffeine. So if you have a kid who loves drinking coffee, drinks coffee day in, day night, day and night, and then they start like not drinking it at all, it's like, okay, something may be red flaggy. Um, dehydration or cotton mouth, that's a very common side effect. So when you feel like you can't really talk, your mouth is very like dry, but almost like cotton feeling, um, that's definitely a sign that maybe there's some nicotine use. You may see someone becoming more irritable, easily frustrated. Um, risk taking, that's a big one because I guess using something that's so addictive is in and of itself addic um, a risk taking. So if you see, um, if you see someone becoming more risky, doing things that are not really something they would normally do, making decisions that are not the best, there may be a sign that they are vaping. Keep in mind, obviously, teenagers are risk taking in general. They are young and willing to do other things. but. If you combine it with a bunch of different things, you can maybe get a sense. Um, it can affect the sleep patterns and create restlessness. So if someone's staying up later, sleeping in, having a hard time falling asleep, staying asleep, feeling rested, 
Um, that could be a sign that maybe there's some nicotine use. Um, vapor's tongue, it's just, you know, the word for someone whose mouth is dry, loses some of the flavor, so they might be more sensitive to different types of, you know, flavors like spicier food, add salt and spices to other meals, like they feel like they need that. So here's just some of the things that you might notice that are not so, like you wouldn't necessarily think of them, like nosebleeds, like, you know, who doesn't get nosebleeds every so often? I mean, if you do, that's a little bit, maybe keep in mind. But notice that like these things can happen in almost anybody. So if you combine and put them all together and notice more than one of them, then you might be a little bit more, you know, be more high alert. Um, I think the most the most noticeable ones that you might see are the the flash drive. That's probably the biggest one you'll probably see. One. Okay. So as I kept mentioning, the withdrawal symptoms. So. A withdrawal symptom is when your brain has become so used to having the drug that now it needs them. And I say need, meaning like it is going to suffer and feel very uncomfortable if it doesn't get them. So withdrawal symptoms of nicotine, and as you were talking about heroin before, it's like those are super uncomfortable. So if someone can't get their methadone, they're not enjoying life right now. But it's pretty similar in terms of like the discomfort of these symptoms, so you might see someone nauseous, vomiting, sweating, anxious, irritable, yawning, difficulty sleeping, shaking, um, might feel body aches, pains. These are all things that kind of give you a sense that their body is not getting the nicotine that it, it feels like it needs. And to get rid of the withdrawal symptoms, many people use more of it because it gets rid of them. Once you give your body what it needs, it feels better. So that's why people continuously use it because they don't want to deal with that because that's not comfortable. So it, it's kind of a, a cycle where they're going to start using more and more because you don't want to start vomiting, sweating. It's just not a comfortable feeling. So notice any of these things that you see. And now the biggest thing that you guys came here for, what do you do if you think your child or loved one is a vaping so as parents and loved ones I'm sure you're you want to just freak out and tell them exactly why they shouldn't do it and why it's the bad thing to do and stay away from all things e-cig but that's probably not going to work I mean think of all the interactions you've had with your kids I'm sure it doesn't work when you tell them that you know better than them I think the best thing as as when I work with my clients the younger people just kind of listen to what they're saying, ask them questions that they can kind of tell you what they know about it, what, you know, open-ended questions, meaning anything that doesn't end in like a yes or no response. So are you using a jewel? Yes or no, doesn't really start a conversation. Anything that's kind of like, so tell me what you know about the jewel, then they can kind of go on and tell you exactly what they know or maybe freak out, but it gives you more of an opportunity to start the conversation. Really, it's you don't want to start accusing them of vaping. You just kind of want to see how much they know about vaping because as long as the conversation is open and honest, then maybe they'll feel more comfortable coming to you and telling you that they need help or that they are using it, they're struggling. But the biggest thing to, to, to do, and I, I stress it, is really just listen to them because many times, I mean, it's our nature to not, and we jump down their throat and you know, you start telling them like why it's bad for you and all the facts and all the this and that, everything in the nicotine and it's harmful and like they don't care, like, they just don't. So maybe eventually they will, but right now they don't probably. So really it's about like, you know, examples. I just read an article that says jewels contain nicotine. I'm so curious like why you guys are into it. Like tell me about it. Talk to me about what you guys like about it. Tell me what it does for you. Just kind of keeping it open so that they feel like, oh, I can go to you about it. Um, Okay, and did I skip a page? Nope, okay. So, like I said, don't pretend you have all the answers. With all the headlines that are out now, it's very easy to pull up this thing and say like, oh yeah, like see what happened here? This kid died or is in the hospital and you know, let's scare them into not using it. Unfortunately, the truth is the more you try to scare them, the more they're using it. So probably not gonna work 
out the best. It's really about as long as they know that you're being honest with them, that you might not know so much about it, and you want to ask them about it, get their information, they'll be more likely to be honest with you as long as you come to them with an open, you know, open mind, not just like judging them and accusing them of using it. Um, you want to help them make healthier choices, talking about the pros and cons, but not just saying that like, if you use it, you're going to end up in the hospital. That sounds very threatening. They're not gonna to respond to that. Um, so really, it's the, the biggest thing is just sharing your concerns, but in an open and non-judgmental way, which is obviously hard because it's a scary thing out there. Everyone's using it, or most people are using it. Um, so like the last example, as you see, it's like, I expect that you'll stay away from vaping, but I also know that it's difficult and I'm here to help you. So it kind of shows that your expectations that like your child will make the right decisions, but also that you are here to help them if they feel like they're struggling, that they can go to you and they can feel like they're not being, you know, shut down or yelled at or punished for, for using it. Okay. I'm sure some of you want to search their phones and look through their rooms and see where you found their jewel and all the pods on the floor, under the bed, and you know, how many kids come in and say like the one time they had a pod, my mom happened to find it, you know, you know, there's always that one time. Try not to do that. I know it's tempting, I know it's like you want to make sure your kids are doing the right thing, but when you do that, you can never unsee what you see. So obviously, like, you hope you don't see anything, but you're gonna search until you find what you wanna find. It's just a matter of like when that is. So you'll just keep searching until you find what you wanna find. And then you almost broke, broke the trust. So now you have to now build back trust with your child. And you just wanna talk in the spirit of love, caring, support, and compassion for their health and their privacy. So really, again, open dialogue express your concerns, but also keep an open mind. And when to seek professional help, if you want, if you or your loved one want to stop vaping, want to learn how to make healthier choices, if you want to learn how as a parent or caregiver you can help your child make the best decisions or you can help yourself, um, that's a good time to seek professional help. Um, doctors, addiction therapists, addiction counselors, therapists, we can all be helpful. We at SAFE actually have a nicotine cessation program, so we developed a curriculum where we help whoever's using nicotine, struggling with it, kind of learn and kind of come off of it if they choose to. Um, so if you ever want help with any of these concerns, please call us, and we are here to help you. We are in the middle of redesigning our curriculum to make it more kid-friendly as opposed to boring. So. If you need any help, you can just call us at SAFE, and we're here to help you. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you for SAFE Foundation, Dr. Dweck. Uh, we wanted to know if anyone has questions for either one of our professionals tonight. Uh, they covered everything, I'm assuming. <laughs> you guys did a good job. Okay, yes. Um, Secondhand smoke. Is there such thing as, as, I mean, they tell you not to be in the room with someone smoking cigarettes, you can catch whatever. Yeah. Is the same true for e cigarettes? Probably, but we don't know. We don't know. That's probably. Yeah, just to jump on that, there's a lot of research that has not been done yet on e cigarettes. So when you said before, like, safe doesn't mean. Safer doesn't mean safe. There's so much that isn't known. These things are really, really new. And think of how long cigarettes have been out for. They've been out for years. And like the e-cigarettes are really just coming out to the scene, like booming in the last three or four or five years. So there's so much research that has not yet been done. So it's really hard to tell, but. So I'll tell you that uh, from a, I'll talk a little bit about regulation. So from a regulatory perspective, you can't. So many states, not all, but a lot of states have said, you know what, wherever you can't smoke cigarettes, you also can't vape. You can't vape on an airplane, at least for the last three years. And so a lot of this is the uncertainty. It's, it's true, it doesn't smell like tobacco smoke. It's harder to detect. I mean, that is part of the problem. But we, we don't really know. So, probably. Okay. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, we hope you all learned something important for us, for our children, for our families, for our community. 
If you don't mind, just I know it's late and you guys are tired. There's an evaluation form, the yellow page. We just want to better our services at SBH, what kind of other lectures you would, would like us to host. Uh, we will be happy to hear um, whatever you have to say. There are some refreshments back there. If you have a long drive to deal, <laughs> feel free. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.